it's Lisa, and I have stolen the keys to the Hallmarkies podcast headquarters once again, and I'm here to bring you a very special episode during these quarantine times to discuss the amazing 2007 Hallmark Channel miniseries, Pandemic. I'm joined by two amazing guests. First is Jonathan North, host of iHeartMovies podcast. Hi, Jonathan. Hey. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And last but certainly not least, we have the incredibly talented Terry Wilson, best-selling author of romance novels and some of our favorite Hallmark movies. So welcome, Terry. We're very glad to have you. Hi. Oh, I'm so excited. I couldn't wait to talk about this show with like literally <laughs> anybody. So this is great. <laughs> uh, okay. So we are talking about Hallmark Channel's just... This movie that came out in 2007, a quick little history is um, there was a Hallmark Channel did an Uncharted Adventures weekend and it premiered on Saturday, May 26, 2007. And it was an original miniseries with the ensemble cast, which we'll get to. And it's actually available on DVD now, but you can stream it on Amazon Prime. So you guys, seriously, if you have Prime, uh, yeah, you need to get into this movie because it's amazing. So um the very quick summary that is on um imdb is not very thorough so i'm going to read the one that i found it's a quick synopsis um if you guys don't mind just to give people an idea because i had never heard of it until the weekend that the hallmarkies podcast tweeted about it and i was like wait what is this i gotta figure it out and uh, i learned and that's how i found out it was on amazon um Okay, so very briefly, um, on a beach in Australia, two American surfers say goodbye to each other as one is about to leave back to his flight back to California. The two men don't notice the large number of dead birds on the beach, which is weird. On the flight, the surfer returning home starts coughing up blood and dies before the plane can land. Back in Australia, the other surfer is found dead. Kayla Martin, played by Tiffany Thiessen, is a medical doctor with the CDC who has been assigned to the case. She and the local officials carry the body of the surfer out of the plane and start processing people to put in quarantine until they can be evaluated for exposure. During the transfer, one of the passengers escapes to complete a business deal and unknowingly spreads the virus throughout Los Angeles. It is also revealed that the outbreaks of the so-called Riptide virus, as it comes to be known, is an offshoot of the bird flu. In, and it's occurring in other cities around the world. The situation is complicated further when one of the passengers, a convicted drug lord being transported by the FBI, escapes with the help of associates and a number of other passengers, some of whom are infected. He begins to steal the medication needed to fight the outbreak and blackmails the local and state officials. As the epidemic worsens and the death toll rises all over California, the governor and the mayor have to find a way around their political differences so they can make tough decisions dealing with the blackmail scheme, as well as the frightened populace and other problems associated with a widespread and deadly epidemic. Oh my gosh, here we go. (laughs) That was a lot. (laughs) So Terry, I'm going to start with you. What were your initial thoughts after watching all of this play out on your (laughs) home screen? (laughs) It was a lot (laughs) because it was already just, I mean, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. Um, And then with the the addition of the whole drug Lord side plot, it just like went totally crazy. Um, And it's funny because before, because I found out about, you know, that this was a Hallmark production um, on Twitter when I think it was you that I saw tweeting about it saying it was Hallmark. (laughs) And I was like, what, this cannot be real life. What are you talking about? Um, But before that, you know, my husband and I had, you know, we had started the whole social distancing. We've been staying at home and everything. So we were looking at things to stream. And when we got on Amazon Prime, like all the stuff, you know, because they show you like what's popular, like what's trending right now. And it was like 28 days later, contagion, (laughs) pandemic. And, you know, I am legend, which is such a downer, you know. But I was like, oh, my God, like what is wrong with people? Why? This is not. It's like a pandemic. It's not supposed to be entertaining. Why are people watching all this? I was, I couldn't believe it. And so I was just being kind of like judgy, like, oh my God, I can't believe people are watching this kind of stuff. And then I saw your tweet 
And then, of course, I ran to Amazon Prime and my husband was like, what are you doing? I said, well, I found out one of these is Hallmark and I have to watch it. You know, I just can't. Um, but it, I did actually, though, in the course of watching it, I think I kind of figured out why everyone is watching this kind of movies right now, like Contagion and all that. Because I was just like, you know, I want to escape. Why do I want to see something like this? But then while I was watching Pandemic as nutty and over the top as it was, which I loved, um, I was like, oh my gosh, now I know why people are watching this kind of stuff. Because honestly, they're getting to watch a pandemic, like threaten to take over the whole world. But then someone saves the day and it's over all in like an hour and a half or like in the case of this right. show, like three hours. So I was like, okay, this is sort of therapeutic. Now I understand why people are watching it, you know. Um, but yeah, so I really, I really enjoyed it. It was just so different for Hallmark. I could not, like I said, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. But then then it still had some of the um, hallmarks, ha ha ha, of you know a hallmark yeah. movie, <laughs> and what, right. you know, like one of the thing, one of the moments that cracked me up and like really reminded me that I was watching a hallmark production is because you know um, in the hallmark movies, the ones where the heroine always has like her big city boyfriend, but then you know she slowly starts to realize that he's like a total jerk. Um, but the audience always knows that he is going to be not the good guy because not only is he not like wearing flannel and all that kind of stuff, but he's like, he's like wearing a finely tailored suit. But the moment when you really know that he's supposed to be like the jerky bad boyfriend is when he answers his cell phone by saying, go for Brad, you know, or whatever his name is. Like, yes. right. Yes. That's always the moment. And it's in so many Hallmark movies, you know, go for Brad or go for Chad, or it's always something that rhymes with ad. Um, but that happened in pandemic. <laughs> One of the, you know, not great city officials answers his cell phone, go for so and so. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is a Hallmark movie that I'm watching. <laughs> that was the moment that, that I knew amazing. for sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Jonathan, what did you think about this overall? Well, when I, the first time I even heard about it was from your tweet. When I just, <laughs> I I was like, I'm sorry, yeah. maybe to everybody. <laughs> No, it's I was like, Hallmark made a movie about a pandemic. And I, I forget that Hallmark wasn't always like all romance all the time, because they had a lot of various things. Like, I really like Alice in Wonderland. And my favorite Alice in Wonderland adaptation is a Hallmark movie. So Hallmark, at least maybe 10, 10 before 10, like 10 years ago, or whenever they started doing the all romance all the time thing. They did a lot of various things. So I guess I shouldn't have been surprised that there was a movie about a pandemic, but there was. And I, when you started to tweet about it and you said it was a Hallmark movie, I replied as a joke that this should be a podcast episode. <laughs> I didn't think you would actually do it. And I didn't think you would rope me into doing it with you. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> but... I I was down for it, and I found the movie surprisingly watchable because, like, with Hallmark, I never know what I'm going to get because I've watched a few for my own podcast because I'll do, like, Christmas movies with Rachel or Rachel and somebody else, and we'll do, like, mm -hmm. a group of, like, three, and they can be hit or miss. Some, some I will like, and some I'm like, when is this going to be over? But... So I didn't really know what this was going to be. And I actually found myself not bored at all. I watched it all the way through, not getting, not feeling like, oh, I, this is so long. Like it's three hours. So sometimes with something that's three hours long, it can be like, when is this going to be over? And I didn't really feel like that. <laughs> it was weird. And I was rolling my eyes a few times, but it was very watchable. <laughs> Right. I mean, I <laughs> I actually saw this come up. The Hallmarkies podcast account tweeted about it early. I think it was a Saturday morning. And I saw it on my Twitter timeline early. And I was like, what? Like you guys like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> and so I searched up because I just wanted to see like, what, what was it about? And that's when I saw it was on Prime. And I'm like, oh, this is happening for sure. And it was the first weekend that we actually um, had been kind of 
grounded at home um, that Friday, bef- the Friday pre- like before that very day before my kid's school had shut down indefinitely. So I was like, well, what better way to ease us into this whole quarantine than watch this? So <laughs> I turned it on and I watched it throughout the day. Um, I had to break for a little bit, but I was like you guys, I just, I could not stop watching it. It was so bonkers, but in such a fun way. And it just reminded me of all the bonkers 80s movies and just where you just have to get along, go along for the ride and just go where it takes you. And I'm with you, Terry, as soon as because I didn't read the full summary. I just saw that it was about a bird flu pandemic. And I was like, okay, it was a one sentence summary. So I didn't see the full summary that I read earlier. And so around halfway through, when the drug lord does his big escape. I'm like, what? This thing just took a turn. What yeah. is happening? Yeah. I, I, have I was way. like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I was so baffled. And then it was just like so many other little subplots, which I want to get to in just a second. But first, I mean, you guys, this cast, I know it's a mini series. So I think back then, you know, back in, you know the early aughts or i guess the mid aughts the maybe it's later it was 2007 um you know and doing a mini series i guess you can kind of and not doing you know over a hundred movies a year i guess you can throw a little bit more money at the cast because they had a lot of people on this they had tiffany mm-hmm. Thiessen, french stewart faye dunaway vincent spano eric roberts roberts curtis brown who's been on a ton of hallmark movies bruce boxliner and bob gunton and I'm just like, wow, every time I turned, I was like, oh my gosh, it's that person or that person. I was like, what? This movie just had a bunch of people. And, you know, despite the kind of goofiness of some of it, I just, I thought it was really well done. I thought they all did an amazing job in their respective parts, maybe except for one, but I won't get into that. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But what did you guys think of this cast? Um, I thought the cast was um, awesome. And it really made me wish that Tiffany Thiessen would be in some modern day Hallmark movies. Like, why isn't she in some of the Spring Fling movies? I think she would be great. Um, So I really, I really enjoyed her a lot. She has beautiful blue eyes. She had a super straight version of that awful friend's haircut that I couldn't look away from. <laughs> I was like, for such a beautiful woman, even she can't pull off that haircut. Like we need to like not have that haircut anymore. But, um, but she was, I thought she, I mean, I'm trying to hurt her feelings. I mean, she was yeah. gorgeous and I couldn't, you know, she would wear her mask and it made her eyes look super blue. And um, yeah. so I thought she was fantastic. And I couldn't believe that Faye Dunaway was the governor. I mean, it, it was, I was really, it was a great, it was a really super great cast. Um, I thought the casting was amazing, but I really do. I do wish that Tiffany would be in some of the modern day Hallmark rom-coms. I think she'd be an awesome Hallmark heroine. Agreed. I very much agree. Jonathan, what did you think about this cast? Um, so I thought this, the cast was surprisingly good and surprisingly huge. Like I was not expecting there to be that many characters. Like every time you turned around, there was a new subplot with new characters and all of them had <laughs> at least semi-recognizable faces like i w- i didn't know everybody's names at- without looking at imdb but i recognized so many faces i think the most recognizable to me was eric roberts who played the mayor and i was just i was so expecting him to take an evil turn because i'm so used to him playing bad guys <laughs> so i was surprised to f- have him like be a a decent guy i don't think he was perfect because i mean everybody had their own little agendas they had to work through before they worked together but like to have him not turn into a bad guy i was kind of surprised with that and i i thought it all worked out really well yes um i was also surprised i really thought i don't know i really thought the entire mayor governor storyline was going to get a lot more malicious and a lot more seedy i thought it was going to turn into like ruining the city just for political gain and it turned out Mm -hmm. a lot different which was pretty cool um yeah and like you there was some people that i recognized but i couldn't place the name and it was like everywhere we turned somebody knew and so many subplots so um so the cast was great and then like you said earlier jonathan that every time you turned it was a little subplot with somebody in it and that's kind of what i want to talk about next the plots because yes we had the main 
bird flu, riptide virus, whatever. But then there were so many other tiny plots there besides the drug dealer, which I didn't fully understand at times. Um, there was a drug dealer subplot who was being transferred. And that's where Vincent Spano came in because he was an FBI agent coming to collect him. And then there was a little side plot about um, an immigrant family who was... Um, trying to make sure that they were safe, but they were showcasing them a lot. And then there was also a very, very active um, constitutional like gun dude who was just everything about all of it was unconstitutional. He kept running to like show his guns and like escape. And then there was um, Tiffany Thiessen's character. Her niece gets sick. And then y'all, to me... The weirdest part was Vincent Spano has an has his ex-wife and a kid. And the whole time throughout the movie, there's this little subplot where they're trying to figure out how to work their relationship with the kid. And he's off being an FBI agent and she's trying to have a new relationship. But they think she gets sick. And for some reason, the kid steals a gun oh and holds some guy up at an ATM machine <laughs> to get the money to buy his mom a cure on the black market. And I was just like, what is happening? <laughs> I know when that happened, I was like, why didn't you just talk to your dad? I mean, because the dad was active in the whole, you know, the, he was already really active in trying to prevent the virus. I mean, he knew what was going on and he had just called him to say, how's everything going? And the kid was like, oh, yes. no, I'm sleeping. Everything's fine. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so sad. But the next thing I know, he had a gun and was going to an ATM machine. And I was like, what is, same. I was like, what is happening? This is not good decision making on his part. I just was blown away. I was like, Hallmark 2007 needs to come back if we're going to make little kids armed robbers. I mean, what is happening? <laughs> oh, my goodness. But my favorite thing that came out of the blue at all was, um, you know, Tiffany Thiessen's niece, you know, was an ice skater. She was a figure skater. And when mm -hmm. the CDC ends up commandeering the ice rink and turning it into yeah. a makeshift morgue, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I couldn't decide whether that was hilarious or just way too dark. It, I know. I was like, I mean, my mouth was like hanging open when it got to yeah, that part. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that was the part that struck me so out of the blue. Like I never would have imagined that in a thousand years. But also the name of the virus being Riptide, I thought was genius. You know, since it started with some surfers, I was like, I was, this is great writing. I mean, I loved it that they called it the Riptide virus. Yes. I also was kind of baffled and I know we're going to do a little part at the end where we're like, wait, what? Because of course this movie is bananas, but there were some parts where I even questioned some of the, just, it was too much. But one of the things that made me laugh was they kept showing people trying to escape because they put the city on lockdown. They thought if we can keep it to Los Angeles, then the rest of California won't get infected. But they kept showing the same um like blockade so you couldn't get out of LA and I'm like that there's not one road out of LA like it, they just kept showing the same blockade and it was just a couple of cars and a couple of wooden <laughs> wooden like police like little lights or whatever and I'm like yeah that's what like they just kept showing it over and over again and it made me laugh I'm like you put a tank out there or like I don't know maybe a whole line of cars or something but it was just silly and there's no way it would have just stayed in Los Angeles. And I don't know, the whole thing would just, I, I will say that I think the first probably two and a half hours ish, I was really into it. And now that I'm thinking back, I think the last 30 minutes, I was just like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Cause <laughs> it kind of got a little more, it kind of got a little more silly there to the end, but I, overall I still very much enjoyed it. Yeah, it did get kind of ridiculous at the end, especially with like the gun, the shootout thing that happened. <laughs> that was ridiculous. I forgot about that. That was, that was the part I was just like, what is this movie? Because you had, like the one lady gets shot and there's like a spurt of blood from her hand. And I was like, what? <laughs> I, I forgot about the shootout. That. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Did you understand? Okay, during the movie, there's an FBI, there's a um, a federal drug lord, like a federal prisoner. He's a drug lord on the plane. And so when they get down and they get, when they land and they quarantine, there's a federal officer down there saying, I have to stay handcuffed to him because he's being transferred. And that's why Vincent Spano is there saying, I have to get this guy, he's being transferred. And then during the course of the movie, he breaks out and he's the whole time. He's very smug. He's very smug with everybody showing symptoms and getting sick and like smirking and like, oh, I guess you're getting sick now, officer, whatever, you know. And and it comes to find out later in the movie that he is immune because he got some sort of um, test vaccine in prison because he switched places with somebody. I, none of that made sense to me. That was um, did you guys understand that? That was their oh, theory. Oh, okay. I thought they were trying to explain it. <laughs> well, they did later after they figured out that that wasn't the case because they said that he had, I think, tuberculosis at one point in his life. Okay. And because he'd had tuberculosis, it was, I guess, maybe similar enough that he, his body was more able to fight off this new disease. So that's why at the very end, they were using his blood as the basis for the vaccine. Okay. I thank you because I was totally lost. I was just like, how do you switch places in a prison without nobody knowing who you are? Like, how do you get into a test group by killing a guy and then taking his idea? You're supposed to be this big, famous drug lord. What? I, I don't know. That part really confused me. So I'm glad you said that because I had no <laughs> idea what was going on. Um, okay, so um, I wanted to ask you guys, each of you, what your biggest question moment was. Like, that was probably mine, but I do have a couple others. <laughs> um, in this movie, I know it was all kind of banana town, but what was the thing that you most were like, wait, what? <laughs> so, um, Jonathan, let's start with you. What was your biggest question moment? <laughs> Probably it's a tie between the shootout and like the literal spurt of blood <laughs> and jumping hundreds upon hundreds of bodies into a mass grave. <laughs> I was like, this, this, I mean, I know that Hallmark was different back then, but I was like, this is a Hallmark movie. <laughs> it just, that I, I couldn't decide whether it was horrifying or hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, um, it was all very, um, it was just very jarring considering what we've been exposed to the last, you know, five years-ish or so. It was very jarring, but mm -hmm. I still liked it. Um, Terry, what about you? What were your, what was your biggest, what moment? Oh, I totally forgot about the mass grave, by the way. That was super dark. <laughs> um, yeah. And I get, you know, because I'm like a true Hallmarky. I mean, I love Hallmark movies so much. You know, I was more invested in the, in the what I think of as the true, you know, what I'm more used to with Hallmark. And so I was really wanting to know what was going on with the niece when Tiffany Thiessen's niece ended up getting the Riptide virus. And they just ignored it for like a whole hour. I mean, she got the virus. She showed up at the place and Tiffany Thiessen's there with all of her protective gear and stuff. And then we didn't see her for like a whole hour. And I was like, oh my gosh, where's the niece? I mean, I was like really worried about it. And I was like, it's Hallmark. Surely the niece is going to be okay. Spoiler alert. She was. <laughs> um, so I was, yeah, I was really wondering, you know, what was happening with her. But also when the plane first landed, you know, because the surfers, you know, they meet each other on the beach. And then one of the surfers, you know, he gets on the plane and the plane goes to Los Angeles from Australia. Um, I was also kind of wondering, like, why no one in Australia ever got it, even though the beach I was, was full of dead too. birds. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> the birds, by the way, weren't just like canaries. These were like big old birds. I mean, I'm not a bird expert, right. but they were like an albatross or, you know, a pelican. I mean, these big, giant birds everywhere that were dead. And then the surfer is dead and the poor surfer's dog died and all these dead people. Mm. You know, and no one in Australia ever got it. You know, just that one surfer brought brought it back to Los Angeles. Um, and of course they, uh, he died on the plane. And so they were, you know, I guess the CDC, which was Tiffany Thiessen and her sidekick, um, you know, were prepared when the plane landed, but 
I mean, this is when I knew I was in for a wild ride because they board the plane in like their hazmat suits. (laughs) And (laughs) Tiffany Thiessen says, don't be alarmed by our outfits. This is just procedure. And I was like, oh my God. Like if the CDC came on a plane that I was on dressed like that, I mean, I would have a panic attack. But also they scrambled the phones of the people on the plane. Like their phones were scrambled, their cell phones. So they like couldn't tell anyone what was happening or where they were. And I was like, mm, this is, this is really a lot of technology and stuff for 2007, you know, right. that they're going to scramble their phones. And because I don't think, you know, I don't know if we were all over social media back in 2007, but um, none of that would have been able to happen today without everyone tweeting about it or Facebooking about it, you know, and telling everyone about it online, unless their phones were scrambled. So, you know, I guess that's, maybe that's right. why they scrambled their phones. But, um, but yeah, I did wonder why no one in Australia ever got sick. Um, you know, when obviously all the birds, the dog and the surfer there, you know, dropped dead like immediately. So, um, yeah, maybe that's the sequel pandemic maybe. Australia. <gasps> yes. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Is 13 years too long of a wait to make a sequel, though, maybe? <laughs> Heck no. I yeah. mean, not realistically, you know, this would be the perfect time to, th- you know, film about <laughs> oh, a new my gosh. pandemic Ouch. and just say, and then just, and then just bring back Tiffany Thiessen and be like, we need you again. We need you to resume your role. And now she's the head of the CDC. Now that she's the director and she's like, listen, I've been in this before. I know what to do. And we can be like, right. We, she does. She helps cure the one in 2007. We know. So that would be kind of amazing. Um, I wondered Terry, because you were talking about the niece, how her mom didn't get it because her mom brought her in to her, her sister um, Tiffany Thiessen and she wasn't covered on anything and you know as a mom the first thing you're going to do is like grab your kid and like hold them close to you and every time in the movie somebody had it and merely even touched something that somebody else touched they would show this black and white slow motion like oh, yes. how they passed it on from person to person and I'm like how did the mom not get it but that's okay I'm glad she didn't I'm glad that family was fine so I'll let that one go maybe um, she had tuberculosis too, like the person yeah Totally. That's a good one. So yeah, the mom would have tuberculosis. Okay, that makes sense. So the only thing I was going to say was, um, you know, because I could get really technical about some of the stuff in the movie, but you know, it's a movie, it's a TV movie. So I'm not going to worry about how they took off their protective gear, even though it was wrong, but whatever. (laughs) Um, I do want to talk about the fact that my biggest wait, what moment was this whole movie, Vincent Spano is an FBI guy with an ex-wife trying to figure out how to navigate that relationship. And then in the last 30 seconds of the movie, for some odd reason, they throw in a romance (laughs) subplot with him and (laughs) Tiffany Thiessen. What is happening? Why would they do that? They spent almost zero time together in the movie. And then at the end, they're like, hey, now that this is over and we've just thrown a bunch of dead bodies in a big grave, you want to go out for coffee? And she's like, maybe. What? It was so random. I know. He needed to get back together with his ex-wife. I was sad about that. But I didn't want to love they were going. Yeah. That's what I thought they I thought they were gonna go there too. That seemed kind of obvious. But you know, Tiffany did deserve a romance, but maybe with someone else. <laughs> I don't know yeah. who out of that cast. Um, I'm not sure, but, um, she was just so capable. I loved her car. I think, I think she could totally cure Australia 13 years later. I kind of wish she was in charge of us here now. I mean, (laughs) it would probably work out really well. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. We did it. A pandemic, Hallmark's pandemic. We we nailed it, I think. Um, and um, I really hope you guys all take a, take some time and watch this, and then you can chat with us online about it. And speaking of online, Terry, where can people find you on social media? Okay, well, um, my website is terrywilson.net, and that's T-E-R-I-W-I-L-S-O-N.net, and it has links to all my social media and all my books and Hallmark movies and that kind of stuff. Um, and then on Twitter, I'm at Terry Wilson Author without the O and author, so it's T-E-R-I-W-I-L-S-O-N. A-U-T-H 
are. And um, yeah, I love to chat with Hallmarkies there. So there you go. Awesome. Thank you. And Jonathan, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter and most social media at John J. North, J-O-N-J-N-O-R-T-H. And then I have my YouTube channel and podcast, I Heart Movies. Um, I don't think YouTube has a dedicated address, but you can just search Jonathan North or I Heart Movies and find me that way. Awesome. You guys definitely go check them both out and check out what they're what they've got online. And for the Hallmarkies pod, you can follow them on social media at Twitter at Hallmarkies pod on Instagram at Hallmarkies podcast. And for as little as two dollars a month, you can be part of the Hallmarkies podcast Patreon community where you can have access to um, previous um episodes before they drop and contests and whatnot. So yeah, as far as I go, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Lisa Fay CO, Lisa Fay Co. So thank you guys so much for joining me to talk about this amazing movie. I really appreciate it. Sure. It was fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. (laughs) All right. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.